Hi, what you're looking here is a 0.2 meter monochromator detector um, made by Verity Instruments. And this monochromator, uh, the model number is EP200MMD. So it's a manual adjustment type. You probably have already seen a, a sim very similar a monochromator uh, teardown on the signal path where Shahir uh, did a, a very nice video explaining how it works and uh, he did some, also did some modifications to make it a scanning monochromator. Uh, if you want to learn how a monochromator uh, works, there um, are a lot of resources you can find on the internet uh, explaining that. But uh, in a very uh, high level, at a very high level, this monochromator uses a diffraction grating that uh, uh, basically the light goes in can be diffracted into uh, different angles based on their wavelength. And by adjusting the mirror's uh, alignment, you can, uh, you know, get your desired wavelength uh, coming out from the exit uh, slit. I like the one you've already seen on the signal path. This one is also uh, has a manual adjustment. And uh, what is different is that this one has this uh, uh, optic uh, coupler, which is a cumulator uh, for the lights uh, to, 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 uh, to concentrate the light beam. Um, basically, as you can see from the manual, that when, when we're using this uh, uh, coupler, we have a much narrower, uh, narrower field of vision so that we can actually uh, observe, you know, like a, a pretty faint uh, objects or uh, the light source uh, without uh, getting too much uh, uh, interference from the surroundings. But other than that, uh, you know, this is pretty standard. It, uh, um, I took out this uh, cover here and uh, uh, screw micrometer gauge where you can adjust the wavelength and it's very uh, smooth. So. Uh, there's uh, you know no reason for me to believe that anything is wrong with this meter, but unfortunately uh, actually after my initial uh, inspection I found out that uh, um, This one actually for whatever reason does not have a, uh, a Optical slit inside. Um, I'm not sure what the reason was and it doesn't look like it was damaged or anything like that It just simply uh, you know, it's it has a round hole in the middle and so uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, this type of uh, slit is very hard to, to find and at a reasonable price. So what I ended up doing was uh, uh, used a, uh, some razor blades. Uh, those are very thin and very easy to manipulate and I cut them and uh, formed a uh, 0.5, roughly 0.5 uh, millimeter uh, slit and put it in place. So we will see a little bit how that slit performs. I haven't uh, tested that after the, uh, the slit was installed. But, uh, um, you know, it should be pretty decent for what, what I will be using it for as, uh, you know, I'm not gonna do any uh, very precise measurements, but uh, that will definitely do the job. So one drawback of this kind of a manual uh, scanning uh, monochromator is that you know you have to kind of uh, on one hand uh, turn a dial very slowly and on the other hand you have to kind of monitor the output voltage to see um, you know the signal you're testing detecting you're trying to detect so I thought I would make it automatic well somewhat automatic as well but I don't have the uh, the tools you know as you saw in uh, on the signal path where uh, he actually made a custom uh, hub and put it on top of this uh, uh, screw uh, micrometer and also he uh, cut out he made a cutout here uh, installed a uh, nice stepper motor so I I really uh, don't feel comfortable doing that myself uh, because uh, you know number one I don't have the tools number two um, this is very it's very precise this instrument so any uh, modification to the the case probably will cause some type of degradation in terms of the performance. Anyway, so what I came up with is a uh, is a, you know s something like this. So here we go. Um, here is a uh, is this kind of uh, uh, very simple mechanism. As you can see, I have this uh, 
uh, this I'm not sure where, where this metal piece is coming from uh, came from but uh, it's probably one of the uh, the, the, the things I uh, you know disassembled a while ago and I just like to keep all the parts uh, who knows when you're gonna need one of them anyway so this this is a this used as a frame and uh, what, what do you have here what we have here is a um, uh, it's an optical encoder. This is uh, taken from a, uh, I think an old HP equipment that uh, is no longer functioning and I might have actually obtained uh, from somebody else but uh, I don't remember. But anyway, it's a very nice and smooth optical encoder. Um, so, and I had lots of uh, the, this kind of uh, gears from, you know, the various uh, printers and stuff like that. So I uh, glued two together very cru crudely uh, so that I can put a cock belt over it. So uh, the idea is that I wanted to uh, put this over the, the turn here. Uh, let me put that in first. Uh, hang on. Let me just put this in. Let's see what I want to do. So I wanted to put this in a turn here and, uh, um, and put this uh, belt over. And so when I manually, uh, when I manually change the, uh, um, I hope you can see here, when I manually change the, uh, the wavelength, uh, this kind of, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, optical encoder will move along. So hopefully, um, and as you will see later, that I plan to uh, then use the signal route to a PC and uh, do some data processing. Now the beauty of this is that uh, uh, because the cogwheel belt is relatively uh, stiff, uh, stiff meaning that it doesn't, you know, you can't really, it's not like a rubber band, you can't really pull it. And uh, um, so, Really, uh, you know, you don't really need to put much force on it at all for this to to turn uh, synchronously with the uh, with the, with the turn with the dial here, and so so that is quite beneficial. And also, this means that I can probably just do this manually uh, without having to you know have a mechanism that uh, move this laterally. Uh, when when you turn this uh, dial, because what 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 ha what is happening is that when you turn, um, you will see that, that this moves back and forth, depending on uh, what wavelength you dialed into. So probably this will be sufficient for me to manually uh, uh, adjust this, and you know one hand holding this. Uh, uh, this encoder, and the other hand is uh, adjusting the wavelength. And I think that will just uh, be able to do the trick. Of course, you can always uh, use another, you know, type of, uh, you know, nowadays you can buy those cheap uh, encoders. Uh, let me grab one to show you. Uh, so here we go. So here I uh, have one of these uh, cheap, uh, uh, no-name brand uh, encoders. Uh, these ones probably will work, but it's obviously, uh, you know, the one concern I have is it probably will skip, uh, you know, readings depending on the mechanical contact. Uh, also, the resolution of this is probably not high enough. But uh, this one, on the other hand, is a very high resolution. Um, I just did some tests where uh, roughly it registers uh, uh, 10 ticks per uh, nanometer. So that's actually more than enough resolution for me uh, for my application because the slit I made was a roughly 0.5 millimeters which uh, translates to roughly 2 nanometers uh, optical resolution. So I think this uh, uh, this one will do the job quite well. And uh, in order to use it I actually uh, I just made a simple shield uh, on top of our Arduino and as you can see here um, this uh, the pins here are used to. Uh, I can plug in my um, plug in this encoder, and uh, then I have this uh, button. Basically, uh, the, the the thought here is that after you know I uh, say dial the full turn, uh, then I press this button to stop the operation, and then I happen to have a lot of uh, uh, you know the, the cables here. Um, so this is a uh, just a simple RCA cable. Um, I use it. 
for connecting to the outputs of this uh, monochromator. And um, so the output would go to a, uh, an RCA cable like this one, uh, for example, here. And you know, I can plug this in. Um, this pr provides a very nice uh, connection and also, uh, you know, it's uh, reasonably shielded and so hopefully it uh, will reduce the noise as well. And on the other end, um, all we need is uh, to connect that cable to, uh, to, the two lit, uh, to the two terminals here. One is com common, which is uh, the gr ground, uh, uh, you know, in respect to this uh, signal output. So. Uh, what I ended up doing there is uh, have another connector here, and I'll show you here on the other side. So I made this a custom kind of, uh, um, you know, like a, an RCA to alligator clips. And uh, because these, uh, uh, originally I was planning to use some kind of mini grabber to grab onto these, uh, uh, these terminals, the problem is that uh, they are just a little bit too, uh, too thick. The diameter to for for the mini grabbers that, that I have to be able to grab them securely, um, and normally uh, an alligator uh, clip, uh, you know, has a uh, it's it's not really intended for for doing this. So I modified this a little bit. If you can, uh, if I can focus here, if you take a look at this uh, the tip, I uh, actually removed uh, one of those uh, tooth uh, right in the front. So there's a hole. So where you know if I open it up. It can actually grab onto the uh, grab onto the uh, uh, this uh, uh, test points very very securely. So um, I intend to use this. Oops, uh, where is it? So for example, if I click onto the signal and click onto the uh, the common, and this actually is fairly um, robust the connection. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so anyway, so then I I can you know uh, put it one side of the cable here and the other side can go to the Arduino, uh, the shield I built. So this is, a, a, you know, the, the connectors here. And uh, also I uh, built this uh, cable with, uh, with two, uh, uh, two, you know, 9 pin, I think it's a, this is a kind of like the standard serial port uh, 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 connectors. Anyway, so I built this. Basically, it takes out the, uh, the voltage output, uh, even though I'm not using it, because I actually am only using the ones from the uh, uh, measuring it from here. But uh, you know, if I plan in the future to do something uh, uh, different, I can probably use it. So the idea is to plug one in here, and the other one I'm going to plug into um, uh, my, a modified power supply. Um, because I also have the plus and minus 15 uh, plus and minus 15 volts, uh, you know, like uh, routed out of the uh, the cable. So let me grab the uh, the modified power supply and I will show you. Okay, so let me move this a little bit so uh, we have a little more space for uh, the power supply. So here is the the, uh, the modified power supply. Uh, if you recall. Um, I got a bunch of these uh, a while ago. These are like kind of sold for parts, and uh, I thought, you know, you can never have too many power supplies. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. So anyway, so I modified this. This originally has a uh, five volt output, uh, and it has, you know, has three basically three independent channels: channel one, two, and three. All those are independent, and. Uh, um, it has a three uh, LM three one sevens inside, so which is very nice in providing us the uh, the uh, voltage we need. So basically, what I did is I, you know, I removed these uh, adjustable these two adjustable. Oops, I can't see this. Uh, I removed these two adjustable uh, potentiometers, replaced them with fixed uh, ratio uh, resistors. So to provide me with the plus and the minus fifteen volts. And also, I uh, changed this 5 volt to uh, make it be able to adjust from uh, just around 2 volts to 10 volts, which is a uh, uh, knob is uh, here. I still don't have a uh, 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 this original knob is too big for this, so I, I, I just you know ended up just adjusting it manually. But this one now is uh, able to adjust output voltage from this uh, original 5 volt channel from. Uh, Two volts to ten volts to control the uh, the photomultiplier voltage. So, 
which um, is quite nicely. And uh, uh, and the behind here, I actually uh, uh, this is a little bit of messy here, but anyway, so I actually made this uh, um, cutout, and uh, I uh, basically put in a, a male uh, connector here, so that I can uh, plug in my my uh, cable. And this connector, uh, in turn, wired internally to the plus and minus 15 uh, volts, and also the uh, um, and also the uh, the control voltage for the uh, from the photomultiplier. So before I show you the uh, uh, you know like run the experiment through. Uh, I wanted to show you the code I wrote uh, for this monochromator um, so that uh, uh, you'll get a better understanding at how this whole thing works. Um, so here's the code, and uh, so the code is also written in uh, MATLAB 2014. Um, uh, again, I came from an uh, academia uh, background. We use, uh, you know, like uh, MATLAB quite a bit. And MATLAB is very nice in terms of, uh, you know, doing simple uh, mathematical calculations and uh, uh, for even interfacing with some of the instruments are very 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 easy um, but if you don't have MATLAB the idea is the same so I would just show you what the, the, the code is doing here so that you can uh, you know uh, uh, use whatever program you feel that is uh, suitable for from your perspective to to do this job anyway so here um, you can see that I declared uh, two variables. So the WL is uh, my uh, start. Uh, the start WL is my start wavelength. So you know I uh, wanted to start at uh, 200 nanometers, and the stop wavelength is a 903. Uh, this 903 is basically if I turn, you know, to till I hit the uh, the other end, um, till the meter can't turn anymore. That's where it stopped at uh, 903. So. By defining this too is actually quite nice, so I don't have to calculate the ratio of uh, my uh, optical encoder and uh, uh, to the, uh, the diameter of uh, the micrometer. The reason is that uh, once I know the start and stop, I simply count uh, uh, the pulses, and then I average it out over that range. Then I I have my uh, spectrum. So as you will see later. So here I have this, uh, uh, you know, I initialized the, the serial port, uh, setting it to uh, 115,200 volts. Um, the reason I set it for this high rate is I noticed that at least for Arduino, if you are setting a lower rate, say uh, 9600, uh, you might actually miss some of the, uh, the, the uh, optical encoder readings. So it is important that we don't skip any readings. That's why I set it to uh, 11, uh, 100, uh, sorry, 115 and 200, uh, 200 uh, uh, volt rate. And so here we open the serial port, and now I'm doing this uh, uh, while loop. You can see here is a uh, while one. Basically, it's a, it's a you know it's an infinite loop, right? So I just uh, scan the. Uh, uh, the serial port and reading the data in. Now the data I'm presenting it's uh, something like uh, you know it's basically a number a space number and I'm using this 9999999999 to indicate that I'm done with uh, scanning. So if you recall I have a button when I press a button that's where this uh, uh, numbers are sent. So in that case I will break out the while loop and to do my plotting but otherwise I'm gonna you know uh, reading my uh, my output. Uh, sorry, the out is the uh, the, the input uh, from the serial port output. Uh, I'm gonna read this in. Sorry about that. Read this in, and uh, um, and if x is greater than zero. Now the reason for that is uh, if I'm at uh, so whenever I first start the uh, uh, the Arduino the optical encoder would be outputting zero. If I somehow turn it the negative, right, so if I turn it the wrong way uh, towards the lower wavelength, it's going to go negative. And because we can't have the index go negative, so so I, I'm basically just saying, hey, on and go, you know, when, when you're going positive, that we record a number. So this is just for some, like, uh, you know, uh, error handling here. 
So when the x is uh, greater than zero, this is our wavelength, uh, sorry, the optical encoder output, then I record uh, the, the wavelength, uh, w record the wavelength, so it's x. y is the second parameter, which is the, uh, the um, DC, uh, ADC output. Uh, I forgot to mention, actually, uh, now I'm going to bring this back here. I forgot to mention why, uh, when I showed you this uh, board, is that, um, uh, this probably can't focus very well, is the input here uh, is actually, anyway, so I, I'll, I'll probably show you uh, again later, but the input here is divided, is, has a resistor divider. The reason is that the output from this monochromator uh, can go as high as uh, 10 volts, which is uh, beyond the uh, the input range for the Arduino analog port, which is only up to your VCC, typically it's 5 volts. So by adding that uh, resistive divider, I can control the output voltage to make sure that it does not go uh, beyond the, uh, the, the, the capability and damaging the ADC. Anyway, so after we recorded the uh, the uh, you know outputs, uh, so basically how this works is uh, W is my x coordinate, uh, and uh, V is my value coordinate, which is uh, the y coordinates. So after I recorded that, um, I'm gonna calculate my uh, W. So by normalizing it, so W is remember is the wavelength, right? So basically, right now the W has uh, the, the the optical encoder uh, counter inside. So this is roughly, uh, as I mentioned before, 10 per mil, uh, per nanometer. So I wanted to convert that back to the wavelength. How, how do I do that? Is basically I divide the uh, that uh, over the uh, my wavelength range and plus my start wavelength. So this will the, turn all these readings back to my uh, 200 to 903. Uh, wavelength I mentioned earlier. And then I'm going to plot this out and uh, also I set the axis to um, you know to, to box the value of sin. So that's pretty much it and then I close the, uh, my serial port. So uh, without hooking up my uh, monochromator, let me just show you how what, what the output for this program is. So now let me start the program and uh, I, uh, before I do that, let me show you, I right now have everything uh, hooked up. So I have my optical encoder uh, hooked up to my Arduino board. So now let me start that and uh, we'll see what we can do. So now if I started turning this, uh, if you notice, uh, you will see that uh, the X number is increasing. That's because I've been, uh, you know, I'm turning this uh, wheel here and uh, uh, the Y is zero because we don't have any uh, voltage uh, input, and uh, so if I but if I touch this, uh, uh, well, I may not be able to uh, produce a voltage here. But anyway, uh, yeah. So you can see some of the the zeros change to one because I touch the uh, the analog input. But anyway, so this is kind kind of nice. Um, once we are done with this, then I hit this button. Um, let's see where's the button. So now you're supposed to uh, send a uh, generate a uh, graph. Yep. So you can see the one there is because I actually I, I said I said I noticed a one popping uh, through the uh, uh, you know the, the 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 serial terminal, and so I can see that uh, it registered one. But anyway, so you can see the x axis here is from 200 to 900 nanometer. And Y is whatever the value we're going to read. So for the ADC com uh, coming in, the Y value would be uh, between zero and roughly 1,000. So now let's uh, take a look at uh, some real life measurement. Okay, here's uh, my setup. As you can see, the power supply is back there. I haven't uh, turned it on yet, but here is uh, a helium neon laser and I did a little bit of modification um, I you probably can't see it but uh, I actually put a little uh, lens uh, in the front so to make the light more uniform basically you know instead of a dot it's uh, uh, make it a very uh, diverged so that um, number one uh, you know the monochromator cannot take in that high intensity input number two 
this will make uh, uh, the optical field more uniform so that uh, the measurement will be more accurate. And also I put a little uh, piece of uh, uh, semi-transparent tape over the lens to make it a little bit diffused. Anyway, so this is a setup here and I probably still need to uh, put a piece of paper over the monochromator uh, so that it doesn't uh, get totally overwhelmed. Uh, you see, that, that, that should be good enough. Uh, let me uh, fold the paper a little bit so that uh, it will stay in place. So now that's the, uh, the uh, laser um, beam. Now I will probably also cover the top even though uh, uh, I, this condition will not be very ideal because uh, you know we still have the light uh, all over the place uh, but I just want you to be able to see this that's why I'm doing this here and uh, uh, here is the, uh, the setup you see earlier and I'll just bring it down here that's the uh, Arduino board and uh, this is uh, uh, the assembly uh, the, the pulley uh, with our uh, optical encoder and with the, the, the cogwheel belt uh, attached. And so this whole thing, you know, I can move it back and forth. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, while I'm moving that, uh, operating this uh, monochromator, I'm going to use my finger to kind of gently pull this uh, against the, uh, away from the monochromator so that we maintain a little bit of tension so that uh, can make sure that the wheel does not, uh, you know, like uh, come loose. So, which means to, to you know, to remember uh, to record the uh, the the pulses uh, precisely. Okay, so after I uh, set this up, as you can see, that I have the cable connected, and now I just turn down the power. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset Arduino so that uh, we make sure that we start from zero. And then I'm going to start uh, the program here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gradually turn this uh, wheel so that uh, um, it uh, increment from the 200 millimeter start, uh, not millimeter, 200 nanometer start to uh, all the way to, I think it's a 903 uh, when it stops. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, the, uh, if you can see that uh, the optical rec uh, encoder is recording uh, the pulses that is generated via the moving of the, uh, this micrometer. So um, when we're done, we're going to take a look at the computer, what it records. Now this is setup, I think it's a very uh, uh, easy, although it's a semi-automatic because uh, you have to kind of, uh, you know, manually adjust the left and right to make sure that uh, your belt is uh, always following the dial. But it actually is very, uh, I think it's a very cool way of uh, doing this because you are not really modifying anything. Um, at the end of the day, after you take out uh, this belt, uh, this cock belt, and uh, you know your my my uh, your monochromator is still the way it was, so uh, it's very non-intrusive. But of course, you have to do this manually. I'm sure you can you know motorize this, but uh, the mechanism probably will be a lot more complicated. Um, so when we're done here, uh, I think it's done. Now I'm going to press this stop button, and we shall see the uh, our result. So let me. Uh, uh, so I apologize for the, uh, the shaking of the camera because I'm just going to take it off and uh, show you the, uh, the result here. So now, as you can see, we have a re relatively uh, nice uh, and sharp line. This line is uh, sitting at, um, I'm going to uh, bring the cursor here. So this is my cursor. Let's see what is the peak here it says. It's uh, so I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it says it's 632.2. Well, so it's a uh, uh, so it's a roughly, you know, it's a give or take. Uh, it has a few uh, tenth of nanometers uh, off uh, what the real uh, theoretical uh, 632.8 uh, nanometer wavelength is. But nevertheless, it's a very clean uh, uh, wavelength we're looking at here. It's a, 
and uh, the, the width is a little bit wider than uh, you know than I would like. Uh, as you can see from under here, that's probably due to the uh, slit size, and I'm sure that if I make the slit size uh, even uh, you know smaller. Uh, this spectrum going to be even sharper, but uh, this is nevertheless very, very, uh, uh, you know, nice way to to uh, draw your spectrum. So next, let's take a look at uh, a spectrum of a uh, UV uh, LED. Well, I'm not sure where I uh, placed my uh, UV uh, LED at this moment. I just had it a few minutes ago, but anyway. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna uh, take uh, you know a few more measurements of uh, other spectrum uh, later and show you guys, and I will post it on my website. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this uh, uh, white LED flashlight. So this is a flashlight. Uh, it generates uh, you know pretty uh, pretty nice white, pretty bright white light, and I don't want to overwhelm the uh, monochromator again. So I'm gonna uh, you know fold it. I'm going to put it under here. And uh, uh, so that should give sufficient, uh, you know, make sure that this is on the, oops. So yeah, so that should give us sufficient uh, light to, uh, for this thing to uh, work. So now, uh, again, I'm going to start uh, the monochromator for one. And hang on one second. So I'm going to start, oh, uh, before I start that, let me uh, reset my Arduino so that uh, the counter will start from zero. I just did that. Now I will uh, start the monochromator, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to move this. So I'm going to move it once. Uh, here, let me just move it this way. So, uh, um, again, you know, uh, the wavelength uh, measurement a while ago you saw on that uh, uh, helium neon laser uh, it's not that uh, it's not exactly 632.8 uh, there could be a couple of reasons uh, one reason it might be that um, uh, because you know as I mentioned earlier the slit was uh, you know I had to make one and uh, I had to uh, put it in place so it might not be exactly centered where uh, the last calibration uh, you know uh, was at uh, so that could have uh, contributed to the little variation there another possibility is that you know during the uh, my movement it could have caused some sl uh, slippage uh, which I highly doubt but uh, nevertheless the uh, the gear was a little wobbly so that could have also affected a little bit so uh, we will uh, we will take a look after this is done And here's a spectrum you see that we just captured. So, uh, like many of the, uh, actually like all of the uh, white light uh, LEDs, uh, the mechanism for creating the white light, the white light is uh, that uh, you have this uh, UV LED, which is uh, uh, indicated by this uh, spectrum, sitting at four, roughly 448 uh, nanometers, uh, that is shining. Uh, the light at this uh, phosphorus coating where you know uh, in turn you emit this uh, uh, light in the visible range uh, which uh, uh, covers uh, you know the, the, the red blue and green area so uh, give you uh, the, the final white light so actually when you look at the, the spectrum density uh, significant energy output is actually concentrated in the UV range I hope you have enjoyed the video and I will definitely take more measurements and uh, put um, the spectrum of various different lights uh, on my website and uh, um, also I will be posting my uh, the code for this monochromator experiment uh, both the Arduino and uh, the MATLAB code uh, on my website as well. I hope to catch up with you next time.